Carnival and Royal Caribbean. The two cruise lines are by far the most popular in the country with millions of cruise passengers sailing on their ships each year. If you've never taken a cruise or you've only sailed with one cruise line or the other, then you'd be forgiven for thinking that both Royal Caribbean and Carnival are exactly the same. In fact, while both lines do have a lot of similarities, there are also some major differences. To be sure, you're bound to have fun on either company's ships. However, if you want the real scoop on how they differ, I've laid out some of the major differences between the two. Both Royal Caribbean and Carnival offer affordable vacations, though prices overall do seem to be on the rise. If you want to sail the more inexpensive cruise line, however, then you're better off with Carnival according to my analysis. About a year ago, I analyzed dozens of cruises from both cruise lines departing from three of their most popular ports. Carnival and Royal Caribbean, they both sail from Miami, Port Canaveral, and Galveston, which gives an ability to compare prices across the lines with similar trips. When looking at the fares for each sailing in July 2024, the peak of the cruise season in North America, I found that Carnival's fares are less expensive on average. According to my analysis, cruise fare for a five-night trip aboard Carnival was about $50 cheaper per person during my search than what was seen on Royal Caribbean. Now, that lower average pricing also held no matter the cruise length. Note, however, that Royal Caribbean's seven-night average in my analysis included trips aboard Icon of the Seas from Miami, which features prices considerably higher than other ships in the fleet. Just keep in mind that this doesn't mean that your cruise will automatically be less expensive on Carnival or more expensive on Royal Caribbean. What you pay for a specific cruise depends on a lot of factors, including when you sail, the specific ship that you choose, and the route that you take. But in general, you can figure that a Carnival cruise will run less than a similar one on Royal Caribbean. While both cruise lines have ships ranging from older, smaller vessels to brand new mega ships, Royal Caribbean and Carnival's vessels definitely differ. Royal Caribbean is well known for having the largest cruise ships in the world. And while Carnival ships can be of comparable length, the overall size of Royal Caribbean's biggest ships is noticeable. Consider that Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas is nearly 1,200 feet long and carries more than 5,700 guests at double occupancy. And that's just one of several in its Oasis-class fleet. Overall, it has a gross tonnage of 237,000 tons. Icon of the Seas now takes over as the largest cruise ship in the world and comes in at more than 250,000 gross tons. All told, the top six largest cruise ships on the planet belong to Royal Caribbean. Carnival Celebration, Carnival's largest ship, has a gross tonnage of 183,000 tons, or about 75% of the size of Royal's largest ship. And this is just one example. When it comes to size, Royal Caribbean definitely has an edge. Good news, both cruise lines offer constant entertainment. In fact, I find a lot of similarities between the lines when it comes to things like comedians, onboard contests, evening game shows, casino gaming, and more. But I do have to acknowledge that Royal Caribbean stage performances, especially on the newer and the larger ships, they can be a step above. This includes the aqua theater shows aboard Oasis and Icon class ships that are unique to Royal Caribbean. But when it comes to activities on board, I think Royal Caribbean and Carnival are very different. Royal Caribbean definitely seems more innovative with things to do on the ship. Newer ships include the world's tallest slide at sea, bumper cars, ice skating, a surf simulator, escape rooms, and even an observation pod that can take you up and out over the water on some ships. Icon of the Seas debuts a full-fledged water park with six slides. Now, Carnival offers plenty of fun things to do as well, but it's typically more of the classic things to do on a cruise ship, like mini golf or movies, pools, and jogging tracks, which Royal Caribbean also has. That said, Carnival is moving in the direction of Royal. For instance, Mardi Gras, Carnival Celebration, and Jubilee have the only roller coasters at sea, and the cruise line is the only one to have an IMAX on some of its ships. One of the biggest benefits to the growth of the cruise industry? As cruise lines grow their fleets, they are able to add more cruises, 
including from smaller ports. Are you near a major cruise port like Miami or Galveston? The good news is that you have your choice of either cruise line. You'll find both lines in any port with heavy cruise traffic. If you are close to a smaller port, however, such as Mobile or Jacksonville or Charleston, South Carolina, then you'll be glad to know that you can still sail aboard Carnival. Royal Caribbean is catching up in this regard, sailing from spots like Baltimore and New Orleans. What's so nice about sailing from those smaller ports, however, is that it means more people can cruise without the added expense of flying. The added cost of plane tickets on top of a cruise can be burdensome for some people who would otherwise set sail. One complaint that many people have, especially with the size of modern ships, is that there are too many passengers. Well, that's just become a fact of life on cruises, but where there is a difference between the two lines is how much space those people have on the ship. Now, there's no perfect measure of this, as ship design can have as much to do with the elbow room you feel than anything. But I like to use something called the space ratio. This is simply the gross tonnage of a ship divided by the capacity at double occupancy. Essentially, this is how big a ship is per passenger. In that regard, there's a marked difference. Royal Caribbean ships, they consistently measure in the low 40s in this segment, no matter whether a ship is new or old. Carnival also has a few that measure in the 40s, but most are around 34 to 37, meaning a significantly smaller size per passenger. In other words, if you felt that Carnival feels more cramped, it might not be your imagination. If you are a budgeter, then one of the frustrating things you might encounter is dynamic pricing on Royal Caribbean. With this type of pricing, there isn't a set cost for something like a specialty restaurant or a drink package. Instead, the price will vary based on the specific cruise that you take. So you could sail one cruise and see one price, but a completely different price the next time that you sail. Royal Caribbean has dynamic pricing on many things. For instance, the cruise line adjusts prices on drink packages. An admission to Thrill Water Park on Coco Cay has also been higher or lower, including some prices of more than $150 per person, depending on the individual cruise. Not having a set price can make it tougher to budget before you buy, as you won't know the price of some items on the ship until after you have booked. Carnival, on the other hand, has more traditional pricing that doesn't change from trip to trip, at least right now. So even if you haven't booked, you'll have a good idea of how much things will cost on the ship. Now on a cruise, alcoholic drinks are a big business. It's not unusual to pay seven to $9 for a beer or 11 to $14 for a cocktail. At those prices, the bar tab can add up quickly. To help passengers budget, cruise lines have drink packages. The packages, they allow you to pay one set daily price, and then you can get whatever you want without worrying about the bill. There are differences, however, between Carnival and Royal Caribbean when it comes to these drink packages. First, Carnival's Cheers package is less expensive than what you'll usually find on Royal Caribbean. Carnival charges around $60 per day if bought ahead of time on the cruise, while Royal Caribbean uses dynamic pricing where the price depends on your specific trip. However, in general, you can expect it to be more than what Carnival charges. As well, Carnival does have a 15 drink limit over a 24 hour period for alcoholic beverages. Non-alcoholic beverages are unlimited. While Royal Caribbean, they make no mention of a limit. For years, cruise lines have had private islands. These islands had largely been the same, offering some restaurants and shops, but the big draw had always been the white sand beaches with beautiful water. These spots, they offer snorkeling, beach activities, kayaking, and more. However, that has definitely changed with the recent renovation of Coco Cay by Royal Caribbean. The cruise line spent $250 million to completely transform the place from a sleepy tropical island to a full-blown theme park. Today, Coco Cay features a full water park with one of the tallest slides in the world, a massive freshwater pool, restaurants, and tons more. Now, when it comes to private destinations, Coco Cay is really in a class of its own. Carnival does have its own private destinations that are a lot of fun, but they aren't quite in the same league as what Coco Cay can offer as far as things to do. However, that will be changing. 
The cruise line has broken ground on Celebration Key in the Bahamas scheduled for a 2025 opening that will be even larger than Royal Caribbean's offering. So what's a cruise without food? This is one area that the cruise lines differ a little bit. Now you won't go hungry and both offer some tasty options. Where the difference lies is in your free versus paid choices. In my opinion, Carnival has more and better free options. One of the most popular places on the ship is Guy's Burger Joint, a great fresh grilled burger with seasoned fries. If you want to eat there, it's free as well. There's also Blue Iguana Cantina, Pizzeria del Capitano, and a few other places where you can grab a bite like Shebang or Big Chicken or The Deli without any additional charge. And some spots that charge for dinner also have free lunch options. Rural Caribbean definitely has free places to eat and larger ships tend to have more free options. But in my opinion, the freebies outside of the buffet and the dining room seem to be more like snacks than meals. Meanwhile, the cruise line seems to focus more on specialty restaurants that charge extra. And those specialty restaurants tend to lean more toward fancier high-end eats than Carnival. When you cruise, you should really think of having two different costs for that trip. There's the cruise fare, which is by far the biggest bulk of what you'll spend. But then there's also the spending that you'll do on the ship, including things like drinks, Wi-Fi, excursions, the specialty restaurants, and more. The good news is that this spending, it is optional. If you don't want to spend anything on board, you don't have to. But if you do spend, then you'll likely find that Carnival is less expensive overall than Royal Caribbean. For instance, specialty cocktails on Royal Caribbean were recently seen at $14 per glass. On Carnival, they tend to run more in the $10 to $12 range. The same goes for the drink package discussed earlier. It's usually less expensive on Carnival. I will say that since the pandemic and the rise in inflation, Carnival's prices seem to be creeping up to match Royal Caribbean. For instance, the highest tier internet on Carnival is now up to $25 per day if bought on the ship. Still, at this point, I'd say that Carnival generally does offer lower prices around the ship. Now, are you a Royal Caribbean fan but also love to travel the world? In that case, you are in luck. The cruise line has trips sailing everywhere from the United States to Asia to Europe. While most trips are from the US, there are a number of other options if you are a fan of the cruise line but want to experience somewhere new. In comparison, Carnival is more focused on the United States with their sailings. Outside of a handful of trips in Europe, there isn't much available that isn't based in the US. The one exception is Australia. Carnival does offer some trips from Brisbane and Sydney for Carnival fans in the Southern Hemisphere. Still, Royal Caribbean is a global cruise line, while Carnival is much more focused on the US. Thank you for watching. If you have sailed either Carnival or Royal Caribbean, I wanna know what you think is the biggest difference between the two brands. Put it in the comments below. Of course, I hope that you'll like and subscribe and you can find lots more on sailing any cruise line on this channel or at cruisely.com. Until next time, happy sailing.